Alright, hi, how's it going? It is going good, how are you doing? I'm doing well, it's just a long day. Yeah, no kidding. Exactly. It's been a Thursday. I feel that for sure. So, t um, t tell the people watching about yourself. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, my name is Tori. Um, I am known on Twitter as Interesting MTG Art. Um, I managed that account. I've been doing that for a few years. Uh -huh. um, I really like Magic the Gathering art. Um, whether it's you know official art from from the official cards or. Uh, I, I really enjoy the fan art, too. Um, anybody looking at the screen right now can see your your wonderful playmat based on the, uh, <laughs> the canvas that you filled up. So yeah, I'll, uh, move, I, I'll move what I'm working on to show it off. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's reversed on stream. Well, I think folks would probably still get like the, uh, the general idea, but... Uh, I, I helped uh, contribute a couple ideas to your playmat, which I'm, like, really... I, it turned out so good. The, no, the, what, what I really... What I can do is cool I can pull up the full art on this image. Okay. Yeah. Browse. Da, 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 da. Oh. So we want this one. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So there we go. Yeah. Move it under here. So, uh, you, in particular, mm -hmm. put towards which ones? I threw in a little bit to help contribute Joven, way down in the bottom right corner. Let me strengthen this a little bit more. So Joven yeah. is down here. There's Joven. Joven was one of the first ones, if not the first one. Yeah, yeah, I got in there early. Um, and then I also threw in for Richard Garfield. Way up in, way up in the opposite corner. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull up Richard in a second. So Richard Garfield is... So there's Joven. With mm -hmm. Fibblethip, Omnath, and all that. And then Richard Garfield is all the way right there. Which is it's based off of the Richard Garfield PhD. Mm -hmm. And I feel it, like that's the uh, the most the, probably the most iconic like artistic representation of Richard Garfield. I'd say so. I mean, there might be a few others that like maybe, but like I I think Richard Garfield PhD is probably the most iconic. Yeah, and it's good to have him on there. Yeah, He's I, right. I feel like he really, uh, really ties everything together. Really tied the room together. Mm -hmm. we, we love a we love a decorative Garfield. A decorative. Yep. Yeah, don't pee on him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, it's a big Lebowski reference. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. It's been it's been ages since I've seen the big Lebowski. So, I uh, one one thing about me, like I. Just I don't watch enough movies. Like I, like I don't, I don't read as much as I would like. Um, I I do read, just you know, yeah. not as much as I'd like. Don't watch enough movies. Like I, there's like a whole wide swath of pop culture out there that I feel like I still need to experience. Um, it's just like waiting to be, waiting to be like slowly picked away at. Yeah, and like it's it's hard honestly keeping up with movies and such. I just happened to do it because, like, I watch a lot of movies. I, I, I really enjoy the art of cinema and all that. Yeah. And, like, there's ever, there's those movies where, like, they're just, like, instantly quotable. And they're just... They're as memorable as they are for a reason. Mm -hmm. And The Big Lebowski, I feel, is one of them. Now, it has a bit of a cult following around it. Which a lot of those movies tend to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, and... Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's a little bit cringe, but I think the movie as as a whole is still pretty good. Yeah. So, tell the people watching what you're working on. Uh, so tonight, 
I decided to work on making something that was I felt missing from uh, from Wilds of Eldraine a little bit. All right. Um, so there's the new artifact, uh, the Iron Crag, yes, um, which is a legendary artifact uh, for two mana. Uh, you can tap it to add a colorless, um, and whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may have the Iron Crag become a legendary equipment artifact named Even Flame, Hero's Legacy. If you do, the game's equipped three, and equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and the, the Iron Crag loses all of their abilities. So basically, uh, when a legendary creature comes into play, you can opt to have the Iron Crag turn into an equipment called Even Flame Hero's Legacy, and it stops being a, a mana lock. Yeah. Um, so when the Iron Crag transforms, um, the... the so the artwork uh, on the card by Adam Paquette um, depicts uh, the Iron Crag itself, which is a big rock uh, with a bunch of swords sticking out of it. And if you're not familiar with the, uh, the lore around the Iron Crag, um, it's a little bit of a, a homage to the Swords of the Stone. Um, basically, all these swords are uh, stuck in by the different knights of the realm going on. I, I want to say they're they're going on the... Uh, what's the, the big quest in El called? Like the... The grand quest or the great quest, something like that. Yeah. Um, and the idea is you stick your sword into the iron crag, and if you're a worthy enough knight, when you go to pull the sword out, it'll actually come out of the lock. Um, so, you know, like the the arc depicts the iron crag in full, but when it transforms into Everflame, uh, Hero's Legacy. You know, it's, the, the artwork is still like this this big rock with a bunch of swords sticking out of it. Instead yeah. Of, like this one specific sword. So tonight I'm working on making a uh, basically a token um, depicting Everflame Hero's legacy. Oh uh, shit, that's so cool. That something to represent. Yeah. So that way there's something to represent like the actual sword itself. Yeah. I am uh, painting a quiver. Yeah. Which, it, it, not a whole lot of progress by the looks of it on stream, but this is a Quiver deck box, which are absolutely phenomenal, high quality stuff, really cool. Mm -hmm. And I am painting the whole top of it white. Ooh. And then I'm going to... What? What? What color was it when you bought it? Uh, black. Oh, alright. So, so it looks like you have done some. Oh yeah, no, the whole top is painted a surface white, but I'm trying to make it a thicker white. So it might show up on camera, but right here it's a thicker white, and then right there it's a less thick white. I gotcha, so it's your layering. Yeah, I'm just trying to get that thicker white, and then I'll doodle on top of it. Ooh. And I want to make it similar to my canvas project, but this one's going to be a little bit more personal. Mm -hmm. And just have some things I like on it. Yeah. Mostly just robots. <laughs> Nothing wrong with robots. Yes, I have a, a little style of robots I like drawing. And I will draw a handful of those on here and some new ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I I'm doing. So really robots. robots are so fun to draw. They're so special. And that's my that's more or less my de facto mascot for this stream. It's my one robot that's loosely based off of the card Lab Maniac. Where it's just this robot just like, yes! Ah ha ha, yes! <laughs> A little Dr. Frankenstein robot. Yes, exactly. Love it. One of the drawings that I made years ago that helps me kind of get back into drawing uh -huh. um, was of a robot that I dubbed uh, the Party Machine Number 5. Um, so, like, a big, like, boxy kind of, like classic toy robot style robot yeah um with like a like a sound system built into it hell yeah that's super cool how i draw my robots um and i draw all of them kind of the same way i have a, I have a method that mm -hmm. i'll try to show off with this little dale arnhart sticker i have who are we are we about to learn the trade secret yes so oh. it's pretty simple what i always start off is with this little box so there's a little box. Mm -hmm. Then a little neck. 
and then a big, slightly bigger box that comes out a little bit at shoulders. So there's, we have a, a, a box, a neck, and a box. And then I go I, I, and then just a line across, a line across. So now you have the eyes and the mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I usually add like, I, they're like cathode ray tube, but they're, they look like teeth. Yeah, yeah. And then I add like a little shoulder orb, shoulder orb, and then for the like lower part, I have like a little like waist. Mm -hmm. Then the hip block, whatever I call it, that little orb, a little orb, mm -hmm. line down, line down. So these are the legs, and then the arms, and then just make the joints, and then the hands. I always have kind of popping out like little things. Uh -huh. So that's a general robot. And then... I love that. I add a little bit of flourish to it mm. with this chest piece. And then it has... I usually stick with three little vents. And then I add some detailing. I always make the knits on the connecting parts tighter than the mouth. Then I add a little inner parts to those. Just add a little bit of shading so it pops out a little bit more, like a like a not quite shading, but like a comic book. Yeah, yeah. Also, forgive me for being a little bit stuffed up. I had I some. You're totally fine. I had some salsa before this, hoping it would make <laughs> me less stuffed up. Like spicy salsa, I should add. Uh huh. And it kind of worked, uh, but only for so long. Oh. The salsa method's only a temporary one. Yes. The spicy chicken method I did earlier, but alas, I'm out of spicy chicken. Oh. Rest in peace. And there you go. That's kind of how I, that's kind of how I draw my robots. I love that. And now I draw them a little bit bigger, add a little bit more detail, but that's kind of the gist of them. I like that. The beyond the mock method. Yeah. We actually, we, we don't draw robots too dissimilarly. I, I do like the, the same sort of thing with the uh, uh, the boxes at the beginning. What? Um, also do the chest piece. Um, and the uh, the knitting on the limbs as well. Um, usually throw in that kind of detail too, although I usually do like a, like a horizontal knitting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the vertical nibbing because it kind of gives that sort of vintage look. Yeah, I get what you're talking about. And it's... The best way to think about it, at least for me, how I visualize it, is it's kind of like rolled up these sort of things. How it's rolled up and it's a bunch of different joints all rolled up. Like line, 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 line. So the head can rotate gotcha. this way. And then mm. the head can rotate lightly that way. So it can nod. I see, okay. And then how I would do the... The waist is just that, but bigger. Mm -hmm. And it would bend within the main chassis. Ooh. For a cartoon robot, for a little comic book cartoon robot, I have thought about the general mechanics of how it would work a lot more than one would think. <laughs> they also have lore. Okay, I gotta know about the lore. So the lore of my robots... At least most of them, not all of them, but most of them, is mm -hmm. they are a a gendered, semi-autonomous like they're robots. They don't really have gender because robots don't give a shit about it. Yeah. But they they work menial tasks and they're where they work menial tasks, but they like working menial tasks to a degree. Because mm -hmm. they're robots, it's just they're programmed to like it. But on yeah. their off time when they're not working, because robots have to get breaks or else they break, um, mm -hmm. they like to participate in cosplay. Ooh, okay. So these cosplay robots are all the different robots I've drawn in magic costumes. Now, a handful of them have taken their costumes, let's say, a little bit seriously. Mm -hmm. And have decided to peruse or partake in those various things that the costume is related to. 
So some of the ones, like the Lab Maniac, is it's a robot that dressed up as Lab Maniac for magic, but then, like, actually became a mad scientist. Ah, I see. And then there's... really, like, weaned into the bit. Exactly. And then there's one robot that is so deep into internet satire and irony that the robot's dressed up as Jace the Mind Sculptor. But, um... Jace the Mind Sculptor, I, I'll pull up for stream. Because the Jace the Mind Sculptor one, I, I put a lot of work into it, and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, browse. Feedback. Look, oh, damn you. I'll find Jace the Mind Sculptor quickly. We want to go... Oh, wait. It'll be in Jace. This is Jace the Mind Sculptor. Oh, no, it disappeared. Oop. Whoopsie. Mind Sculpted just a little too hard. Oh my god. Yeah, that's Jace the Mind Sculptor. Oh, that's too good. Ta-da. I love it. So that's Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> God, I love it. Love a dark magician. What? Who? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean the legally distinct uh, magical uh, entity. Uh, uh, Jace. Jace. Uh, Dark Jace. Jace the Edgelord. Mm hmm. Yes. Sculpted minds and committing crimes. Absolutely. But yeah, that's uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. And then the other one I have that's a little bit more of a weirder reference is. I think it's under this. It is. This is also a kind of a bizarre reference. But this robot took it too seriously and turned themselves stop motion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's fun. I love it. Which, that's probably the most obscure reference robot I've drawn so far, but I'm so proud of it. I was going to say, I don't know that I get the reference, but... It's, it's Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer. It. Oh! <laughs> it's Peter Gabriel's sledgehammer. <laughs> and once I say that, if you've seen the music video, you know exactly the look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna... Man. I, like, I don't know if I want to, like, throw a request at you, but... All right. One of these days we might have to talk about a uh, David Byrne and stop making sense to grow that. So I I have not done that yet, but I have done a David Byrne inspired time twister. Or not time twister, time walk. Really? Which is I have it right here. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so that's that's my time walk proxy. And the Respect. Do you know what the flavor text is? Uh, I cannot read it. So, there's the zoom in, which is not great. But we go up mm -hmm. here. Oh, okay. Same as it ever was. Mm -hmm. Same as it ever was. We can't sing it too well, or else YouTube will copyright strike us, because I'm going to try to record this and upload it for people who... Uh, cannot see it otherwise. Oh, hell yeah. Not yeah, that there's no, much to watch, because I'm literally just doing this pen marker, trying to make this quiver completely just overly white, and then I'll sketch on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I promise that in that process I won't get any copyright struck. So. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. No, the, the, the robots, I actually have a, a musical reference already lined up for the next one. Mm -hmm. Which is an even more obscure reference than Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer Robot. Mm. But I, I just have to wait for the energy and the time to do it. 
I get that. Instead of an 80s reference, it is a 90s, 2000s reference. Mm. And it's a band that I, I know is successful, I know is popular, but it seems like only I really like know who they are. Or people know them for like one track. Like they think they're a one-hit wonder. They're not a one-hit wonder. They're like a cult band. Yeah. Oh man, now I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna try to throw a few guesses out. Alright. Um... So the first band that comes to mind that kind of fits the criteria, this this might be going a little bit too obscure. Maybe maybe Lucius Jackson. It is not Lucius Jackson. Okay. I don't I'll, feel like I'll, Bikini Kill is no. obscure. No, I'll, I'll give you three hints. One, okay. it's a it, the band started in the '80s, and their one hit wonder was from the '80s, but it was a one hit wonder in the '90s and 2000s. Interesting, okay. That's hit one. Hit two is it's a band that is way more important than they seem, mm -hmm. but it takes a little bit of work to figure it out. So they're a cult band. A band okay. that's not a one-hit wonder, but their main... They're really good music. You wouldn't really guess. Yeah, yeah. And three, their song was, in the past ten years... Used for an Arby's commercial, I believe. Really? And it's also played in grocery stores. It's not the Pixies, is it? It's not the Pixies, but you're close. Huh. Oh, okay. Moderately close. Oh, mm, okay, so I'm like in the ballpark. Yes. Okay, oh man. S same general vibe, albeit less loud, quiet loud, like the Pixies mm. do. But they do have songs about mental health, and they do have songs that go completely off the rails. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I wonder and if they, see the Buffalo Surfers. Uh, also not far off, but less heavy. Okay. Um... Feeling... Gene's addiction is a little bit too popular, and they, and they were really just bigger hit than these. Yeah. Um, shoot. Oh man, this is gonna bother me. Like, I feel like I'm on the cusp of guessing. You're close. Like, you, you, younger me would have figured this out. Do you want the genre? Yeah, hit me with the genre. Uh, folk, mm -hmm. punk. Okay. And folk punk. Because folk punk didn't really exist then, it exists now, and this band is very much a folk punk. A folk punk proto band. I gotcha. Okay. For Ginger. Um. Huh. Proto folk punk. Starting in the 80s, had a big hit in the 90s and 2000s. I'm guessing kind of on the cusp. Yeah. Now, their song that is a one hit wonder came out in the 80s, but it sounds like it's from the 90s. Oh, right, right, okay. Um. Oh, my God. Interesting. Now, this is kind of a stretch of a hint, but they're, they were featured music wise. Um. Also in a comic book inspired, a dark comedy slash comic book inspired movie that also came out in the 90s. So not Fight Club, but like a movie that like, if you've seen Fight Club, you'd be like, yeah, that movie is kind of like Fight Club. To a degree. I gotcha. Okay. It was a superhero movie? The, the, the movie that the band showed up in was in the superhero movie. Okay. Now, it might be early 2000s as well. Oh, boy. Man, this is bothering me. Like, I, oh, man. Um... Man, my reflex is to run to Google, but I'm trying really hard not to Google it. Um... I think I think you stumped me. Like I'm I'm kicking myself forward a little bit, but do you want to know who it is? 
Yes. It's the Violent Femmes. Oh! With their main single being Blister in the Sun. Yeah, duh! I went through, like, a big Violent Femmes phase in high school. And then the song that was in Mystery Men was their cover of No More Heroes. I complete. Oh my god, I completely forgot about Mystery Men. Was that Ben <laughs> Stiller in that? Yeah, Ben Stiller wasn't that. Oh my god. Poor memory unlocked. Like, I remember seeing commercials for that when I was a kid. But I want to draw a robot doing part of the music video from American Music by Violet Femmes. I haven't listened to American music in years, but it's like just popping back into my head now. That's that's good. I'm very very excited to see this now. Yeah, no, I I, I quite like the Violent Femmes. Uh, I I think they're a very underrated band, and mm -hmm. honestly, like, and I have one of their most I think probably one of the arguably best folk punk albums ever. Is there like a weird album that like they kind of didn't like, but they also kind of did like? That is just like such a bizarre fucking mess, but it's so good because of how weird it is. And that's their album, Hallowed Ground. Hmm. Uh, I love it when a when a band tries to like go out of their comfort zone. And ends up making something just like really, really lucky. Yeah, but their album Hallowed Ground I really like because like it has tracks on there I feel like personify the idea of like frustration perfectly. Mm -hmm. With stuff like um Threats. No, that's not the name of the song. Uh I have to actually pull it up. But their tracks, I Hear the Rain, Never Tell, are like perfect embodiments of like general frustration. And then once you get the Black Girls and It's Gonna Rain, is mm. when it doubles down. Hmm. And whilst the language usage in the, so in the album is... Yeah. Maybe hasn't aged great when you realize it was written by a frustrated high schooler. And then performed by a frustrated adult, mm -hmm. you can forgive some of the linguistic usage. And it's 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 weird dark humor is not nearly as inappropriate or no longer okay like some Randy Newman stuff. Yeah. But it's it's if you look at it through the lens of folk punk and what folk punk does and gets away with, then it's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Oh, so yeah, Violent Femmes. I, I want to draw a robot doing the bit from American Music. I'm stoked for this. That, that sounds like it's going to be pretty good. But it's one of those things where I have to, like, do it first. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that one. Real talk, I've been wanting to get back into photography. Hey, I suggest it. There's a photographer I've worked with on Instagram where he, uh, I feel his stuff's really inspiring. Uh, Tricolor Photos is the name. Okay. I did his logo a while back. His name's Joel. I, uh, when I went to college initially back in 2008, I'm old. It's um, fine. Yeah. 33. I'm going to be 34 next month. I'm terrified. Um, uh, when I went to college initially, though, I got into college uh, my first go around yeah. uh, on a full ride photography scholarship. Uh -huh. And I just, like, really miss doing it. Like, I. So, like, I. I, I went into college for this. Yeah. Um, kind of when, it, you know digital photography was really like kind of beginning to pop off in its infancy uh, sort of thing yeah sort of like like digital cameras weren't like uncommon to see uh but the uh the iphone had just come out um, yeah when i started college like the first iphone dropped um so digital like really like 
so like digital photography in and of itself is really starting to like the the, the technology was getting more accessible. Um, yeah, which meant that a lot more people were doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of folks around where I grew up in Iowa um, were also like really getting into photography, doing a lot of photography. They were like a lot of photography businesses uh, that people were kind of doing this just like a, a side gig thing. Um, yeah. A friend of mine's uh, brother-in-law um, actually happened to be like our like general area's like most I would say in-demand wedding photographer. Or at least that, that, that's how I perceived him to be. Yeah. Um, and I was really stoked on doing it. I kind of wanted to take a I, I wanted to do art photography. Like I didn't want to just do like portraits and stuff like that. I really wanted to like try to like Make convey a whatever message was uh, in my head at the time, like through photography. Yeah. Um, and one day, I th this is gonna sound so silly, and it's gonna make me sound like a like a person who quits like way too easily. No, it's fine. Um, but yeah, one day I was. So when, when I was in college, my first go around, I was uh, still learning with my parents. Um, our deal kind of was that as long as I was going to college, like in town, you know, I could, yeah. I could make that home. Um, and one day I was in the kitchen, I think it was doing the dishes, and my stepmom and I were talking about something. I was like, you know, like kind of telling her about what I wanted to do as a photographer. She was just kind of like, mm hmm. So how do you expect to make money doing this? Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, 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 crap. I hadn't thought about that. And then that kind of, like, it, it was kind of like, a, I think, a little throwaway comment from her, and I don't know that she, like, meant anything bad by it. Or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but I ended up kind of scuttling my photography dreams at that time. Um, kind of changed majors and then like you know, school was already kind of kind of going rough at that time and started to like more go down. So. Oh, I feel that. I, I, I had to drop out of college for financial and mental health reasons, so I, I completely understand. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, college they like I'm It's so hard. I, I'm yeah, no, it's a, it, it's it's a grind. Like I'm this is so I'm I've started back in college and this is my first semester uh, taking college classes in about like 12 years uh -huh. um, and I'm juggling that with my job and I'm like I'm liking my classes so far I'm taking a, a intro to business and English comp all right um, I'm enjoying them I'm I, I'm pretty sure I'm like one of, if not potentially the oldest guy in both of those classes, but hey, you know, it's, that is what it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, like juggling that with a uh, with work is a challenge. It's a task and a half. Mm hmm. It is rough. Kind of hoping I'm up to the challenge. Hey, I think you can be. So, uh, yes. tell us about your uh, art and what you do, or what you consider art. You've said some of it already. Yeah, yeah. So, for art that I make myself, um, you know, I initially in my younger years, I kind of focused on uh, uh, photography. Um, I came up around the same time... YouTube did. Um, I was in high school when YouTube was really kind of starting to take off um, in the, the mid to later 2000s. Um, so, like, I, you know, I did uh, like content creation for a short bit during those years. Um, do you, I, I, I will not give any hints, though, to, to where that content's at. I can tell you that a lot of it is still online and that oh, I've watched it recently. And it does not hold up. Like, it is bad. This is, like, just, like, me and a couple of my friends goofing around making home movies with, uh, edited in Windows Medium. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> no, so, trust me, yeah, I've, like, I've been there. I, I did some cringy YouTube stuff, too, that got a few thousand views, and I quickly realized, oh, God, this is not a good idea. <laughs> I did that in, like, middle, I, I did that in middle school, and I said some things that I would not say now. Oh, yeah. 
And it's, it's one of those things where, like, I, I would not say those now. That was one of those things where it's obviously like, ah, oh, here's a middle schooler who's trying to be edgy and cool and... Oh, God. Exactly. I think it's all been deleted, and I've owned up. It's just like, uh, no, this is a bad time for me and all that, but... No, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Luckily, luckily... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm nine years younger, so I don't quite oh. get the full extent. So, like, luckily for, for me, I never said anything like, you know, like a like offensive or degrading or other Yeah. Like that. Um, it, it was just... It, all it was all really low quality. Yeah. Um We were talking about the art thing. <laughs> went off on a like a No, that, that's that's okay. That's that's um, the point. That's good. Yeah. Um so so yeah, so I've done video making. Um I like to draw. Um I've posted some of the magic proxies that I've made on Twitter, just as, like, for fun. Play. I know, you and I you, you and I worked on the, the Cursed Jewel proxy a while back. Yes! The Covenant Jewel! I Oh my god, I was just thinking about that earlier today. I So, like, I, man, I don't know if it got many eyes on it, but I, like... I know Reddit got picked up a few back in the day. Yeah... Man, that, oh, that was a good box. That thing is it, it's it's great, but it's cursed as hell. Oh, absolutely. That is maybe one of the most cursed things I've made. Um, besides... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, for, for those watching, I, I'm not going to give the full context, but more or less it is just a reference to, like, a weird internet Craigslist post about a guy who has a magical jewel that he wants people to ejaculate on, or ejaculate mm -hmm. with, and it charges up the jewel. <laughs> and I don't know any other way to put it, other than that. But like, sometimes inspiration hits, and you just you have to follow the muse. That, yeah. that was that was a particularly weird muse. So thank you for helping oh, me yeah. bring that to fruition. Gladly, I, I love doing cursed shit like that. I've convinced one of my favorite magic altarists in the scene to make a altar that's a reference to a, f a furry porn comic. <laughs> like, no, mind you, the, the altarist did not draw furry porn. It's just a reference to a furry porn comic. Uh huh. And the card is Portable Hole. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I, that makes sense. And I, 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 have, I, I have and do take full responsibility for that one. That's great. And there's there's layers to the joke too, because in the comic, more or less, like the big like driving force is this door with a big hole cut out of it. And ever. I, 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 Everyone who watches this that like what knows the comic knows exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, uh, so I uh, inspired an alterist to draw a reference to that on an on a card for portable hole, and I'm very proud of myself. So I I, I, I love doing curse shit, and then I have my sensei's divining bottom as well. Okay, that's just clever. Like that, that's just it's a joke that's been made before. I just decided to, to kind of actually do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it to life. I did bring it to life. I, I even drew the emote on it based roughly off of uh, uh, myself. Roughly. All, all of my characters' faces that are like particularly like expressive, I've done based off of myself. So, like, for right here, I have a little statue trophy character I was working on that I'm still... <gasps> I'm trying to finesse the project. But this face right here uh, mm -hmm. is roughly based off of me. And then this face right here is also based off of me, but, like, they're, like, Muppetized versions. So that's more or less if I was um, Ernie and that was more or less if I was Bert. 
Ah, okay. And so you have one with this big stupid grin and the other one that's a little bit more sly and contemplative. Mm-hmm. That is a good way to describe for it. Yes. Now I think... How do I look, Bernie? Look your eyes, Bert. I think that's kind of done. So now I just have to do the easy part, hard part, and clean up some of those edges. Hey. Get some uh, rubbing alcohol at a Q-tip here. Clean it up. Now, unfortunately, I have to wait for it to dry before I start actually drawing stuff on it. Like, fully dry. But I think we should be good. Yeah. I don't mind it being a little bit messy, but I don't want it too messy. Gotta have just the word. Exactly. Exactly. Coming back to your question about other art I've made, I feel... I'm sorry, like, I, I, if, if I end up turning this into, like, a, no, like a makeshift fine. therapy session, it's my apologies. No, it's uh, fine. It, it's totally okay. I, uh, so, like, when it comes to, to making art, I've never had, like, any, like, real formal training. Well, neither have I, so... What? All right, so I'm in good company on that. Well, I've had moderate training, but, like, it's just a few art classes here and there. Yeah. I wouldn't like, call I, that like, formal I, I training. Some, yeah. Like, I like I took some uh, photography classes when I was in high school, but whenever I tried to, like, like learn a process for making art, um, for whatever reason, like, taking to that process always came to me it, it always came to me with, with some difficulty. Yeah. Um... So a lot of the stuff that I make is just, like, it's really rough hewn or kind of uh, rudimentary. Um, mm -hmm. It's something I end up uh, feeling really kind of self-conscious about, so I don't tend to share things super often. Um, I Like, I've played some music. Um, I played bass, although I'm... Hey, I gotta skedaddle very, very briefly, because I have to take a call. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll monologue, then. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, no problem. All right, so, hey, everyone, it's, uh, it's me. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the the art I made and uh, kind of kind of how I feel about it. Well, Sorry, I'm on a stream. What's going on? While we look upon uh, that's fine. It's nice looking quickly. Um, so yeah, so music. I yeah. played the bass uh, for a good-ish yeah. number of years. Uh, basically, when I was in my late teens into my uh, my earliest twenties. I was yeah. never very good at it. Um, I had very few music lessons growing up, um, and only ever played exactly. one show. That's what I told uh, you. The one show that I played. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was a three-song set at a local music conservatory yeah. uh, for a bunch of kids, um, as well as a member of a like, like a fairly prominent uh, known punk band. Um. I fell flat on my ass midway through our last song. My bass came unplugged. And I got my bass plugged back in to hit the final note of the song uh, triumphantly while everyone just stared. Uh, they just d did not enjoy it. Um, so that, that was my whole rating of music. Um, beyond that, of course, I've uh, done uh, photography. I want to get back into that. Um, I enjoy drawing quite a bit, although my drawings are not uh, particularly skilled. I'm not great at, like, anatomy or anything like that. I just kind of... I doodle. I, like, a freehand... Like, I, I have a freehand style. Um, I just kind of tend to, to doodle for fun. Um, I really love doing digital graphic design. Um, I've done kind of freelance uh, logo work for friends, um, more kind of friends of friends, um, and did. I, I was briefly unemployed a few years ago, and I did a little bit of that work to kind of uh, help make some extra money while I was kind of between jobs, and uh, that was a lot of fun. 
Um, and it was a really good way to just kind of have a creative outlet while I was uh, trying to find a job. Um, that's a that's a lot of like kind of where I throw my creative energy into. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, creation. My my philosophy when it comes to just being creative generally um, is that you know if you do it, you'll you'll get better at the way that you do it. You'll find a process that works for you. Um, and I think it's really important not to compare yourself so much to others. Um, I have a, a friend who I love dearly, um, who's a really skilled musician, craftsman, he's great with his hands, um, just someone who's always really taken to uh, to practical work really well. And I, I used to compare myself to him a lot growing up, and always, uh, at least when I would examine myself, uh, kind of find myself wanting um, in comparison to him. Um, at one point, I realized that it was kind of affecting my friendship with him. Um, I didn't really feel like, uh, like I, you know, brought a whole lot to the table as far as being friends went. And, uh, you know, I had to, like, do some really serious self-reflection, self-inventory, and, uh, you know, kind of figure out that, you know, like ultimately whatever I make is an expression of myself whether or not it's a particularly skilled expression um, I don't have to be able to draw photorealistic stuff to be able to draw um, what I make is what I make and as long as I have fun doing it that is the most important thing by a wide margin um, and like I've been trying to keep that energy uh, a lot lately as I also try to teach myself how to cook. Um, I've never really been much of a cook. Uh, cooking is never something that's come to me very easily. Uh, but thanks to uh, getting shamed by my most recent ex, uh, I she she kind of gave me a hard time for not being able to cook. So, so I'm back. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, no, you're good. I uh, I kind of kind of went deep into the weeds. No, it's fine. Um, Sorry about that. I just had a t like I mentioned a little bit beforehand, I took a semi-important call, and it, I, I, I took it, had it. I, I missed it, actually, because I was talking with you, and I realized that, like, oh, crap, the person was trying to call me. Oh, no. No, they're fine. They're fine. They'll be fine. But, no, I, I, I took the call. Mother. And <laughs> no, I, I, I'm using this pen, and... The one I used wasn't quite together because some of these pens are, uh, they're a little bit screwy. But yeah, they are Posca pens. And sometimes they work great. Other times they are a tad buggy. Especially when you try to like uh, blend colors on some, mm -hmm. and the blending might work, but the pen—it's got the sharpie problem, where you do a thing with sharpie, and then if you use a different sharpie, uh, the other sharpie has like left an imprint. Yeah. Okay, I get what you're. I get what you're talking about. Like some of the colors left behind. Mm -hmm. But no, I had that happen. Alas. So I've been trying to teach myself how to cook recently. Okay, tell me about it. Or if you've already told Chad about it, give me the the heads up. I mean, the, the the TLDR. You're good. Uh, that it's actually the the subject that I was getting into. I just kind of like oh, perfect. My, what? So it, it, this actually uh, starts from a, another divergence. So I've been seeing a therapist since good. February, um, and that's been going really well for me. And one big thing that I've been kind of working on. All right. 
even though my therapist and I haven't quite quantified it like this, um, it's kind of building back up my uh, my self esteem a little bit. Hey. Um, I so like I like at this point right now, I'm yeah. I'm like mostly really feeling myself. Like I'm doing well in my job. Uh, school, as much of a challenge as it is, is going okay. Um, but the last person that I dated was somewhat emotionally abusive yeah. um, and kind of really wore down my self-esteem um, in, in ways that like I didn't even really catch until after the fact. Oh, yeah, no, um, I, trust me, then, I understand that. Yeah. And it's, it, it can be insidious, like, it, it, and it's something you gotta watch out for, like, you know, even when you, you think that you're doing okay, you never know the, the mark that you're making on people until they mm. like, really make it known to you. Exactly. Um, so, I, like, one thing that she really gave me crap about was uh, the fact that I'm not much of a cook. Um, I, like, so she used to work in, like, a, like a, like, kind of a relatively high-end restaurant um, for the area, and so she, she got pretty skilled at cooking. Um, but I, like, growing up, I never really had, like, no one ever really taught me how to cook. Um, and, like, what few things I had kind of learned, I, I, I kind of had to learn on my own and just kind of suss out on my own. Um, whenever folks would try to, like, you know, try to, when, whenever I would, like, try to seek out um, advice or instruction on how to cook, people would always just kind of kind of get a little shitty with me about it. Mm -hmm. um, but over the last, like, I would say, like, roughly eight months or so, um, I've been, like, kind of trying to push myself more and more gradually to cook more and more. Hey! Um, yeah. And I've just been kind of doing a simple stuff with that, like, nothing super crazy or anything like that. Yeah, um, well, cooking's hard, it, though. Yeah, it can be. Um, but one thing I've found that's really kind of helped me in that regard is that, like, if I just give myself room to experiment and just kind of kind of try different things, yeah, um, you know, give, give myself some room to to fail, uh -huh. um, then I can like kind of take more risks um, and kind of you know push myself out of my comfort zone to to try something that. Um, prior, like, two recently I maybe wouldn't have tried. Um, I, like, this might sound like a really irrational game, um, but I had always kind of had, like, this late fear of, uh, uh, like, trying to cook meat. Yeah. And, like, not cooking it enough and, like, making, like, trying to make it for somebody and getting sick. Uh-huh. Um, so I've been trying to push myself to cook meat more just for myself. Um, to kind of try to just push myself over that fear. Yeah. Um, See, my irrational fear is wasp and hornets and yellow jackets. Yeah. I, I just don't like them. Well, I mean, they're, they're scary as hell. <laughs> they're little bastards, and I hate them. Mm -hmm. I had a hornet nest pop up out in front of my uh, my front door a few years ago. And I go out <laughs> and like, uh, spray the nests with like bug killer. And oh boy! I, they got pissed, and one of them stung me in the back of the neck. Ooh. Um, yeah, it was not fun. So, like, I had this uh, big like wasp sting that I was nursing for a couple of weeks. So I work at a water park, which uh, I've mentioned a few times on and off here and there. Um, hmm. Because it's an outdoor water park, wasps are pretty common. Yeah, yeah. It, it'd be strange if there weren't any wasps. Uh, but the hard part is sometimes there's a ton of them. So like one weekend back I was trying to clean up some of the trash cans and like there was like a, a an impromptu wasp nest in one of them. Mm. And there was like at least 20 or so wasps. I'm like, uh, no one come near the trash can. I am quarantining it for the night and in the morning or like once I get off of work tonight I'm going to go to the local Walmart by... Mm -hmm whole bunch of wasp spray, and just go Rambo on every f fucking trash can's ass. 
in the in the water park. And I did. And I knocked out like ten something nest with a can two and a half cans of bug spray. Uh, I almost got stung if not for the fact that I was wearing jeans because for some reason they kept going for my legs. Mm-hmm. And those little bastards cannot get through my jeans. You got there. Your battle armor. Absolutely. My battle armor. A decent pair of blue jeans. Through the power of moderate anger and blue jeans, I shall defeat you. Mm-hmm. Of denim and destruction. Absolutely. Sounds like a great video game name. Denim and Destruction! Oh yeah, I'd play it. Absolutely. But yeah. Uh, so, you know, I get, I get it, and I, I, I get the sort of like, oh, I fear about doing this. Um, nah, my, my irrational fear is wasp. I don't like him. But I, I, I get the cooking fear. Yeah. I just, like, I, I feel silly for, for being afraid of, like, something that's supposed to be, like, so rudimentary. Um, and I, like, I'm getting over that, that fear now. Um, but... It's just, it, it feels strange to, like, be afraid of, you know, something that so many people have a, a grasp on. And I think, I think that's where my fear stemmed from, ultimately, mm-hmm. is that, like, you know, it's, it's something that, like, I, I, at any point in my life, I very easily could have learned to do if I had, like, had the right mentor figure around to show me how. Yeah. Um, I, I think my greatest fear was just looking like kind of a goofball. <laughs> <laughs> when trying to cook, just being like, hey, how do I make a meatball? Meatballs are, I mean, they're surprisingly complex. I can believe it. Real talk, I still don't know how to make a meatball. <laughs> uh, like, I, I, I can't imagine it's like that complicated, though. Uh, it's a bit more to it than one thinks, but it's really not that bad. Okay. Hmm. I think I know what my next cooking challenge might be. Hey, you should do it. Yeah. Interesting meatball art. <laughs> Just interesting meatball art. That's, that's the new Twitter name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a meatball account now. Meatball gang, rise up. We're out here. Huh. Type, I'm, I'm working on it. A poem I wrote a while back because my, uh, is there's a whole thing, <laughs> but uh, yep. copy and then just need to email it to my dad, which is just a whole sort of weird. Like I need to email and I need to email a poem to my dad. <laughs> I feel like that in and of itself can make a good basis for a poem. No, I'm just I'm just copy pasting it and sending it. Full send, let's go. There you go. Come on, Dad, I hope you have your notifications on. No, he does, he's texting me. For the longest time my dad didn't have the uh didn't have a phone with the ability to like text with any frequency. And then like, after I took a trip home a couple of years ago, like, he started texting me just, like, kind of here and there if something important came up and he didn't feel like giving me a call. And, it, like, to this day, it still kind of bugs me out a little bit. I'm like, is it okay for me to text my dad? 
Yeah. No, my dad and I talk regularly. I live near him now, so like every other week or so, uh, mm -hmm. we we have drinks and cigars on his porch. That's sweet. Yeah, it's nice. I have a good relationship with my dad, and I'm thankful. My mom, uh, it's getting better. There you go. Sometimes you just have to work on making progress. Yeah, no, my mom used to be really abusive. Mm. So you guys have like kind of, I'm guessing you guys have kind of had to... Get over that, yeah. yeah. Exactly, but like, we figured it out. We're getting better. She has her moments, I have mine, but um, she's not nearly as bad as she used to be. I'm not nearly as of a problem to her as I used to be, being like, I don't live at home and I'm an adult now and I can realize that some of the things I'm doing, I, I, I realize that they affect people more than I think they might. Yeah, you have a capacity for uh, self-reflection. Exactly. You know, we still got work to do, but I mean, it's... it's it's working out. Yeah, it's getting it's better. Stuff at the time. That's good. Looks like CT's here in the chat. Oh, nice. Hey, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> Hopefully the the Discord video is work. Oh, it's working now. Whatever. I guess I have to like mess with it. But hey, how's it going? Hey. Also, I have a question for uh, y you as well, since you've gone through most of the things. Uh, mm -hmm. How what? Uh, so you answered the question about how you started doing like your artwork. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any tips, uh, just in general, just just good tips for people who might be watching? Oh man, so this is one. I, I think my biggest tip might actually be something that I kind of monologued a little bit about while we were taking the phone call. All right. But I'll, I'll reiterate it, so I think it's a good thing to kind of take to heart. Um, when it comes to doing anything creative of any kind, whether it's yeah. you know, drawing, painting, making music, cooking, um, you know, the like the whole gambit of creative work that a person could do, um, yeah. I think it's really important to take to heart that you don't have to compare yourself to others um, and that... Um, even if what you make isn't is is not high skilled, um, or isn't what uh, you or like you know someone close to you might perceive as like quality, it's yeah. still worth making. Um, as long as it, as long as you find joy in the in the process of making it, and I think uh, especially finding joy in the process specifically um, is the most important thing uh, to have when. Uh, creating anything. Yeah. Um, if, if you're not enjoying the process, like if it doesn't bring you uh, even, even like a little bit of happiness to do, um, it, it just it may not be worth uh, worth pursuing for you, potentially. Um, but like if it brings you like any amount of joy, like any, any amount of genuine uh, happiness or fulfillment, yeah. Um, even even if it's just like a like a little tiny pinch, um, then it's absolutely worthwhile and worth pursuing. Um, it doesn't have to be like full blown passion. Just like enjoy the enjoy the ride and enjoy the process and you know just do do it because you want to do it. Yeah. I think uh, I I don't really like talking about like the like like. Twitter discourse, like I usually try to stay out of like it, basically like any Twitter discourse that I see pop up. Uh, but one thing I do kind of see crop up here and there. I had something in my mind now I just forgot it. Or oh no! I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I'm about to go off on this like wild tangent. And now I completely forgot what I was going to talk about like an instant. Um. Oh, what was 
I get... Well, I'm finally, I, I'm yeah. finally to the drawing robot part of the sketch, of, of the quiver. Yeah, and it's starting off great. I'm drawing the lab man one first, just because like that one's like the most complicated. Very nice. I remembered what I was going to talk about. Alright. Um, so, like, you know, being that we're like kind of in the, the magic tour space, yeah. um, and given the prominence of content creation as a pursuit within the magic Twitter space, uh -huh. um, you'll see a lot of folks who uh, are really put a lot of themselves into content creation. Uh, every once in a while you'll see uh, um, like dissatisfaction with like the content creation grind uh, yeah. prop up as the, the, the discourse to shore. Um, and every time that does, like, I, like, I understand that a lot of the folks in our space who do that for a living have, you know, skin in the game. They have, you know, money on the line. It, it, it's, you know, it's how they earn their living. Yeah. Um, when it, when it comes to hobbyists, um, I, I really feel like taking to heart doing it for fun um, is paramount um, and, and not allowing yourself to get to a point of burnout um, yeah. is really important. Um, like, I... Like, I, I can't imagine that, like, most of the folks in our space who create content are making a living off of it, especially, like, kind of given how... How much magic content there is out there in 2023? Yeah. Um. So, like, whenever I see that conversation pop up, and it hasn't recently, um, but whenever I see it do like pop up, I'm just kind of like, in my head, I I, I just kind of want to be like, hey, like, didn't y'all start doing this because you thought it would be fun? Yeah. Like, where's the joy in what you do? Where, where's the where's the fun in it? Mm -hmm. You just seem perpetually like, pissed off. Why? 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 Yeah, it's like forcing yourself to put out a YouTube video every day or two, or putting out a like an episode of a podcast every week. It, it, like if you're not if you're not doing it because you're having a good time, um, but why are you doing it? Yeah, why why are you, why are you putting yourself through that? And like, yeah, I get it. There's still that skin in the game sort of thing, but like, it's still mm -hmm. it's still just frustrating because it's obvious often. Yeah, right, like people can see it, and like, and I, I mean, it really is a different conversation when when it's a person's job. Yeah, you, you just you have to go to work. Like it's, you, you don't really get a choice in the matter unless yeah. you're like independently wealthy. Um, but yeah, it just it, it it bugs me. It more than anything else, it just makes me sad. Like, yeah, it makes me sad for him. So, I don't know. Like, I, create because it's fun, and create because you want to do it, and create because it brings you joy. And don't force yourself to, like, to to have output. Um, yeah. Don't be if you can help it. Don't be a slave to any algorithm. I guess. Exactly. That is, that. That is my rant. <laughs> hey, it's a good rant. Yeah. It's a damn I, uh, good rant. Eight. Ironically, a YouTuber that I really like, uh, the video game YouTuber Cave Ash, uh, put out a like he, he just he, he shit posts a lot on Twitter, and I love it when he does. Um, and one shit post was just really it hit me in a really profound way. Um, he was uh, basically like dunking on uh, people who leave like really negative comments on YouTube videos. From Correctly. Yeah, um, but his uh, like his response to them was simply seek joy and understanding. <laughs> and I was like, wow, oh, damn, dude! Like, I know you're like, I, I know you're like, like dunking on some grouches, but like, but, like it hits home. It was like that, that is accidentally like just that's probably the best burn you could get. Yeah. So like I. <laughs> I DM'd him and I was like, "Hey, uh, just so you know, like I know that this was a shit post, but this like really left a mark. So just thanks." 
Um, and he responded and was really cool about it. Hey, that's great to hear. I think that laugh out of it. Yeah. So. But so far, this is the Lab Man robot, which I'm, I'm very fond of. Hmm. It, once it loads, there it goes. <laughs> so it, it's it's the one arm is a little bit longer, but there's my little de facto doodle mascot, and it matches the play mat. Yeah. It uh, yes. It turns out a Beyond the Machina play mat's gonna match with a Beyond the Machina flipper. Exactly. Hopefully, I can probably get this done tonight and then seal it. Mm. Hopefully. But we'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Oh, other way. Nope, other way. But yeah, no, the, 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 the thing I find out. You're saying. Oh, go ahead. I was saying I, I, I'm looking at my Ron robot for uh, re, uh, reference, and it's not going to be a perfect one for one because some of these robots I put a lot more time into, and they were a lot bigger, and other ones they're just like. I could draw them off the top of my head, but I'd rather not. I'd rather use like a reference. But the reference is much bigger and much more detailed than I have the room to do here. But, I mean, it's pretty decent. Yeah. No, I like how it's turning out so far. Thank you. you know, the, I find it ironic that you've got a Lab Man robot on a box that's going to hold a bunch of cards. Yes. That's, that's the first one I'm drawing. <laughs> Lab Man is my fourth favorite card, which leads me to my general final question, though we still have plenty of time left. What is your favorite magic card, or what are some of your, some of your favorites? Oh, man. That is a really good question. So I think my number one favorite magic card is probably my favorite commander. Um, All right. Ayara first of lock. All right. Um, I uh, look. I, look. I know it's like a relatively recent card, um, but I, I I loved Throne of Eldraine, even even if it was like a like a busted set. So what do you think about the new one? I'm I'm really liking Wilds of Eldraine. I like I I I think I'm an Eldraine fan. Like it's not even like the the top down aspect of the plane doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Like King Arthur, like the King Arthur stuff is cool, and I really like the uh, the fairy tale pastiches. Yeah, um, but I I think what I I think I really like like I really like Magic's take on that kind of vibe. Just generally, like the like the more specific like fairy tale uh -huh. and Arthurian references, are, like don't usually like land for me. Um, but the more general vibe, I like, I think they really captured the feel of a fairy tale playing this with Eldrin. Um, I, arguably, I think better than they did. Before. Wow, hot take um, here. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is that is uh, one of my magic hot takes. Um, now, I, like that's not to say that like what Morwen did wasn't good. I just think in like that specific realm of like getting a fairy tale vibe, I think Eldrain did it a little bit better. Eldrain also had an extra like decade of like general development experience to work off of. We would not have Eldrain without Lorwind. Exactly. Yeah. Like Eldrain. Like Morwen. Crawled so Eldrin could walk. In your um, opinion. And now we'll be going, in, in my personal opinion. Yes. Um, and now we'll be going back to Lorwyn in like a year or two, and uh, Eldrin will have walked so that way uh, Neo Lorwyn can walk. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to Lorwyn in my time to see. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what, Una comes back to life, and this time she's. Uh, she's driving the convertible. This time, Uno's fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Una two electric Unalu. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I responded to a to a tweet like a month ago, uh, talking about the Return of Warland set, um, and it's just like you thought Uno was evil before. Now she's a landlord. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Oh, 
right when we got the Deeds of the Kingdom. But other favorite magic cards. Um, yeah, Throne of Eldraine just had a lot, like a lot of my favorites in it. I love Embercleave. All right. Um, and like I liked equipment before Embercleave, but I think Embercleave like helps me learn to love equipment. Um, to the point where I think like Boros equipment might be my favorite like reoccurring like color pair archetype. Magic. All right. Like, a really boring thing, but like I just like I want to I want to put a big hammer into a little creature's hands and make them a big creature. The the chat of Boros equipment enjoyer. Mm -hmm. I just I like I'm a fan of the combat stuff. I think it's I think it's fun to to fight in a card game that is about in a card game where you're playing out like a fantasy conflict. Yeah. Um. So I'm a big fan of Ember Cleave. Uh, other cards that I like... I'm to think about this for a sec. Uh, Bitter Blossom. Oh! Uh, so another Eldrin card. Yeah. Great! <laughs> <laughs> this time around, yes. Accidentally. Um, but, I, well, yeah, yeah, I've been a, a big Bitter Blossom fan for a long time. Um, I've also got a real soft spot for scavenging. Scoos! Um, yeah, I love Scoos. Um, so, do, do you remember uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers? No. The, uh, the video game series? Uh, no, I didn't play it. <laughs> oh boy, okay, so let me tell you a bit. Uh, here we go, I'm going into rant mode. Uh, Please, so go. The, the, the Duels of the Planeswalkers games were kind of a, uh, a sort of a project- Yeah, alright, CT remembers Duels of the Planeswalkers. By the way, I CT, I really, really enjoy your proxies that you've shared on Twitter. Um, I'm a really big fan. Um, so keep up the great work on that. Um, Duels of the Planeswalkers uh, was a, kind of the video game precursor to, I, I guess, what we now have in Arena. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I had one of them yeah. on the Xbox briefly, and I'm just like, this is stupid, and I threw it away. Oh, I love so like real talk. Now, mind you, this was this the, was before I started playing Magic. So, ah, uh, okay, that okay, that makes more sense. Um, it was actually it was Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Yeah. Um, specifically that like kind of got me back into Magic for a little bit when I was in my early 20s. Uh -huh. Um, I I played the shit out of Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Um, it was uh, based around Horset 2013, which had a big, like, Bolas theme going on. Mm. Um, so, like, I like I got really into, like, that edition of Duels of the Planeswalkers, specifically. Yeah. Um, and then Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 came out um, and had kind of a, a, a Chandra thing going on. I think and... I played 2014. Okay. So, so you might know what I'm talking about. With this. I think I had a Garuk theme, so, maybe? Well, that was 2015. Oh, uh, then I played 2015. Yeah. It's based around, uh, uh, themed around Corset 2015. But in, uh, Duels 2014, um, when you purchased the game, I don't know if you had to, like, do anything in the game to unlock this, um, but you could get, like, a, uh, a code mm. that you could take to your LGS and then exchange that code for, like, a uh, special promo pack of cards. Um, so I did this. I was living uh, in Omaha at the time, um, and I went and found an LGS in Omaha, and it was, I called him up and I was like, hey, uh, are, are you guys doing the, the Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 promo? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, cool. Um, so I went by that LGS and brought my code with me. I think I had printed it out. And I was nice. like, hey, I want to get a Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 promo pack. Here's my code. And the guy behind the counter was like, you don't, you don't have to give me the code. That's fine. Felt like a real dork for, for printing it out. <laughs> um, he, it felt so silly. I didn't know what I, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but he gave me like this promo pack. And I don't remember any of the other cards that were in the pack. But like one of the cards, and the card that stuck out to me the most... 
uh, was a foil promo scavenging ooze. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, and I still have that scavenging ooze to this day. Um, yeah! Alright, so CT knows what I'm talking about. Um, so, like, I still have that scavenging ooze. It's over the years it got really beaten up. Um, I, I didn't start... This is, this is going to maybe sound like sacrilege, but, like, I, I didn't really consider, like, the the monetary value of my cards to be relevant at all in regards to collecting until I got back into the game in 2018. Uh -huh. So, uh... It, I, I basically never saved my old cards. I was just kind of like, they're, they're made to be played like this, so I'm going to play them on the sleeve. Yeah. Um, and consequently, uh, my promo scavenging just got kind of beaten up. Mm -hmm. um, so it is uh, heavily played. Um, but, I mean, I think that gives it some some rough huge charm. It's a, it is a well-loved scavenging piece. Oh, no! They just had the packs just sitting there in the store. Oh, goodness. I mean, to be fair, like, Duels of the Planeswalkers was really cool. And I really wish... Wizards would find some way to incorporate, like, some kind of single-player mode. What country are you in where that? you can't legally play Duels of the Planeswalkers? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they exist. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a guess off the top of my head. I'm, I'm going to say Brazil. But I mean, that, that also doesn't sound right to me, so I, I very well can be wrong. Oh, it's not like you can't oh. play it legally. <laughs> Just choose not to. <laughs> Sail in the high seas. Hey, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that looks like a pretty sick start for this thing so far. Let me get this yeah. Go. And I have a whole extra thing to... That is a beautiful lab bot. One one thing I really like about your style tree is the uh, the really defined line work. I, I gotta ask, were were you in Invader Zen fan when you were a kid? Uh yes and no. Okay. So I was more an Invader Zim fan as like not an adult per se, but like seventeen year old. And not not a, not a huge fan either. But like enough mm. of a fan. I gotcha. I uh, the reason why I ask one one person who is a really big artistic influence on me when it comes to my drawing, I think, was uh, uh Joni Vasquez, the creator of Invader Zim. Um, ha have you ever read Johnny the Homicidal? Man? I have. I, I quite like it. I I feel like your style is very evocative of. Vasquez specifically uh, his like illustration in Johnny the Homicide on Mimi. Well, less violent, of course. Yeah. Um, and less grotesque, but still, I, I feel very. Uh... Am I gonna sound like I'm like I'm full of shit if I say Vasquez esque? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's, it's very evocative of uh, of his style to me. I I, I dig it. Uh, well, me starting my my biggest inspiration starting was the works of Frank Miller of all things. Mm. Alright, uh here. And I, I have one artwork. I've done only one artwork that actually is um Go to this. No, stop that. Sorry, someone's messaging me on a thing. No, you're good. But anyway, so took care of that issue. Um, so Frank Miller, I've done one thing that is Frank Miller esque, and I'll, I'll pull it up on stream because I'm I'm still very proud of it, and it's my artwork for Cranko Mob Boss. 
I think I've seen your Krenko. Just a, a heads up to the uh, the Discord video it doesn't seem to be showing. You're anything. kidding me. One minute. <laughs> no! No! This thing is buggy as all hell. <laughs> there you go. It was, it was up there for a moment. This is the only Frank Miller esque art I have done. No. And I'm very proud of it. So that, that's my Cranko Mob Boss artwork. And it is directly inspired by Frank Miller's uh, Sin City, which I, I really mm -hmm. adore. I was so, going to say it is very evocative of Sin City. Yeah. You can definitely see that influence there. But then some other influences of mine are like, th thank you, CT. Or is it CT or SETI? The other big influence of mine is like MC Escher. Mm -hmm. And MC Escher Esh. <laughs> uh, my dad's being a smart ass. <laughs> We, we love a good dad, but also it's a good dad. So I'm trying to find, like... I mean, that, that, you're saying... I'm for being a, Stop! I, totally I, I feel like being a smartass is a pretty good thing for a dad. Oh, yeah. So this is an MC Escher one. MC Escher inspired. Way less detailed, but, like, once it, like, is the right size... Mm -hmm. Uh, back here. But this is my Paradox Engine artwork, which is still one of my favorites. Yep. CT, cool. This is my Paradox Engine artwork. Which is still super cool that I was able to pull that off and make it work. Well, that is nice. Yeah, this I, one. Yeah, I, I want this one framed someday. Yeah. yeah. I can definitely see what you're going for there with the. Uh, as far as like the, the Escher and Flint showing through. I do want that though. That that is a genuinely very good piece. It's it's so cool, and that's one of my earlier ones. Mm -hmm. oh, I got two here. And I will do one more that's kind of my inspiration on my sleeve, which I need to pull up in a hot second. My dad has a bedtime, I kind of don't. I wish I didn't. I was just thinking about that the other day. I mean, I technically do, because every adult does, but... Yeah. Remove. What? No, what happened? Oh, haha! <laughs> I nearly destroyed your audio! <laughs> Whoopsie! Get rid of image 2. Yes, remove image 2. And then, for some reason, the Discord is awake, but not move. Oh, God. What the hell happened? Are you still in the call? Are we still calling? Yeah, yeah, we're, I'm still here. Can you All hear right. me okay? Yeah. Sorry for a minute, I pop that out. Alright, cool. So it was just bugging out for a minute there. You're good. So, anyway. Oh my god, I'm dying! Anyway. Uh, <laughs> cool. 
So the mob boss, the Cranko one, is based off of Sin City a little bit. The Paradox Engine is based off of MC Escher. And then... Mm -hmm. This one is loosely based off of the work of Bill Sienkiewicz, who did New Mutants for a while. Oh, uh, okay. He did New Mutants for a while. He did the character of Legion, which is one of my favorite superheroes. Or super characters. Yeah. This is my artwork for Ad Nauseum. So there's Ad Nauseum. Yeah. And all of these are hand drawn. It is impressive. I know. I, so I have seen this one before. Yeah. And I really, really like it. I really enjoy. I like. I. This is going to sound weird, but I'm just kind of glad that it, like, maybe I'm. I didn't see it right. But did you give Ad Nas guy hands? I did in in that artwork, but his hands are like falling apart and like they're ripped up. Oh, poor guy. This Ad Nas man. <laughs> yeah, that's fair not right if he has hands. Uh, uh, that's fair. So now I'm trying to decide what robot to draw next on this. So I can't just draw one robot. I have to draw a few. Yeah. Maybe... Oh, who is that robot from one of the Urza sets? Um... The one... Oh my gosh, hold on. This is going to follow me. Uh, they have to be robots I've drawn so far, or they have to be the new ones. I gotcha. So this is an artifact creature. Oh, there we go. Um, hold on, I'm going to do a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of scryfall. Searching here really quick to see if I can find the card that I'm thinking of. I think it's on the reserve list. Metal worker? Sure. Yeah, metal worker. Yeah, I can have metal worker later. I already have an artwork for metal worker. Okay. What the artifact card? Yeah, my metal worker. I will pull up here in a hot second, and then it'll be about nine o'clock, which will be about our stopping point. I, 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 I'm not making it a hard stopping point. It's more of just like a. We'll want to kind of wrap up a little bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that is absolutely fine. I uh, I tried to power through my uh, my homework so I could join you tonight. But hey, I really I appreciate it. Well, of course. Like, it's, I, I was looking forward to this. Um, but unfortunately, there was uh, a one like little bit of my, my homework that I didn't get done. So you got to do a uh, discussion board reply. Oh, boy, I hate those things. Yeah... I, like so, here here's what I love about this. Like, I, like I've only been in class for a few weeks, so maybe I don't have a whole lot of room to complain about this. I haven't found our discussion board stuff in my classes to be like particularly particularly engaging. Like, it, like it gets me thinking about the material that we're working for a little bit. But yeah, like, for for a lot of my classmates, it ends up just kind of. They just kind of end up regurgitating the uh, reading material a little bit. Um, in my English comp class, though, I was reading through one of the chapters I had to read through last week, and there was a uh, like like an example passage um, that they used uh, talking about. Uh, it, it was a chapter on uh, essay structure, uh -huh. and they were talking about. Um, I, I, I don't remember like what the like why they used this example right off the top, the top of my head, um, but they like pulled as an example this uh, former college student's essay um, on social media use in the classroom, like as, as an education tool. Yeah, um, and it specifically like this person's essay specifically called out discussion boards as like a like a less than useful 
tool for teaching. Excellent. And I was just like, I was reading through this, and in the back of my head, thinking about how I had a uh, had a discussion board post to you on uh, on Thursday for this class, and I was just like, man. Do you think the teacher knows? <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope she read the book. I mean, you never know sometimes. I have a feeling... Yeah, that's... Yeah, true. It's a, an interesting moment of... Uh, kind of... What's the, the term I'm thinking of? It's, uh, I can't think of it. Uh, whatever. Yeah. So this is, this is a reference to an old Thopter I've drawn, but this Thopter is not quite turning out how I want it to, but it's still it's still funny. Ooh. I used to have a uh, in Urza Lord High Artificer Commander deck that was like very roughly a uh, Thopter typo deck. Yeah. And like mono blue Thopter is a little bit tougher to build than you'd think. Like a lot of the like really hyped like Thopter cards. Uh-huh. Red. Um, strangely enough. So, honestly, the best thing i found is Psy Master Thopterist. Hmm, yeah. With Urza in the 99. That is a good call, yeah. I feel like uh, like Urza being the the commander of the deck feels a, a little bit degenerate, but like, him being like in the 99 of the deck, m much more manageable. He's, he's just a bomb. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I, I just, like, I, I had a Psy Master Thopterus uh, arena deck that was originally Thopter Tribal. Now it's more just, like, blue artifacts. Because mm -hmm. I have an artifact deck in almost every color pairing in Magic now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, artifacts really have gotten kind of kind of color agnostic. I feel like we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of like green artifact friendly cards in the last few years. Oh for sure. I think though, like I, I've been thinking recently about revisiting the uh, the the Thopter type old deck idea. Um, yeah. I'm kinda wondering if like doing just sky thoughters would be a good idea. Yeah, so, that might do the trick. Yeah. But I don't know who I'd want the commander to be like right I have another idea for a uh just sky deck, and maybe here's an idea. Maybe I could do like just both of these themes and like go like half and half, a little bit of both. Alright. Just kinda like dilute each of the themes. Um I had an idea for a Pramicon vehicle deck. Um, that I was going to call uh, uh, Pramicon's Rainbow Road. Uh. And basically, like, you know, Pramicon is the uh, the wall commander um, that only allows the table to attack in a, in a certain direction. Yeah. Um, so, like, you can only attack the player to the right or to the left. Um, so, like, the idea would be to, like, get a bunch of like vehicles into play or, or like creatures that can really easily crew vehicles and then do like a little bit of a a little bit of like soft stacks I guess like a like maybe like a ghostly prison um or like a uh, there's a creature I think that like uh, you have to pay like one or two generic mana for like each creature that's attacking you yeah. I do like a little bit of soft stacks just to like discourage my opponent to like the other direction from attacking me um and then just like just swinging in with like big vehicle hits and just like whittling down the table like, just a little bit of stacks as a treat yeah yeah like no nothing like too egregious like something that's still like like casual friendly stacks I guess of um, course I, I should have known yeah. <laughs> totally makes sense. Um, yeah, no, like, it, I mean, it's, it's an idea I've been workshopping in my head for a while, and I think it can be a, a lot of fun. Like, I, like, I, like, I, I kind of wanted it to be, like, Wacky Races the deck a little bit. I dig it. Um, 
even, even though we kind of have what what seems to be a little bit of a, a wacky racist set you know, down the line. I know. Uh, what, the good and bad news about this is I was actually working on a a Twisted Metal secret lair, like a fake Twisted Metal secret lair. And I was like, yeah, we're more or less just having Twisted Metal, the the magic set coming out soon. I'm like, ah, well, mm -hmm. all right, I'll bid it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I mean, like, you, you should still do it. Like, I, I think that could be really cool. It's just also a lot of work. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. I, uh, so, like, talking about custom secret layers for a moment, one project that I kind of started and it stalled out on a little bit um, I've wanted to do like a like a berserk custom secret layer. All right. Um, and I've thought a lot about like what cards I would want to have represent what characters. Um, like I kind of one of the things I think that's stalled me out on it a little bit is that I haven't uh, read Berserk up to uh, like Intaro Mira's last chapters. Yeah. Um, I'm only in the uh, Conviction arc, specifically like the, the Lost Children arc. Yeah. Um, it's a, for sure it's a tough read. It's oh, like, for sure. It's like not hard to read, but like content-wise, like... No, there's, like yeah. If, if, yeah. Every I, content warning ever. <laughs> I've seen the anime. Ooh, okay. The original anime. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the, the weird CGI one. I got you. So you've seen the '97 anime, yes? That uh, that adapts the Golden Age. Okay. And I I I hate the intro song so much. I love the intro song. I was just gonna say, tell me why is a Bob? Tell me why. <laughs> I did, oh man, that was that was the song of the summer for me last year. For, <laughs> the for intro, no the the, the bad song. berserk intro. The good berserk intro. Why is everyone who's seen the 90s Berserk just brainwashed that, that the original Berserk intro is good? Brainwashed nothing. I have not watched the 90s Berserk anime. So, like, I, like I, all I know are, like, clips of it I've seen on YouTube in the song. And I like the song. It just it hits for me. Well, the, like, entire, uh, the entire 90s series on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Oh, yeah. of course it's on YouTube. Oh, okay. Now that I think about that, that seems so obvious. Of course, like, someone's supposed to do it to YouTube. Might have to, might have to n not go check that out, FBI. Put your um, glasses on, nothing will be wrong! <laughs> I love it. It's so goofy. It's so bad. It's, exactly, it's not bad, it's fun! <laughs> I, I, I will maintain that it's fun. I really, really love it. Um, I, I can't talk too much as I was watching JoJo for a good while there. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, JoJo's dope. I got it with JoJo. Um, <laughs> All right, we got we got to wrap up a little bit. So tell tell people where they can find you. Tell tell us where, where they can see what you're up to. All right, so I am mainly on Twitter right now um, at interesting underscore mtg. Um, I got you know if I have my way, I'll pop up in other places here and there too. Um, I do work around a couple of Magic Discords occasionally. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Coach Jero, uh, the Unsummon Skull, um, I pop up in his Discord very, very rarely. Um, and I've also posted a couple times in the Infinite Tokens Discord, too. Um, love, love the Infinite Tokens folks. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's me, uh, mainly Twitter. So. Hell yeah. And Drew, where can they find you? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Beyond the Machina, and you've been watching my stream. You can find me at <laughs> twitch.tv slash beyond the Machina, which is kind of where you are right now. Uh, uh -huh. You can also find me just about everywhere else with at Beyond the Machina. Uh, only on Twitter, there's no E in the the, which is mm -hmm. wild, but you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I make cool stuff I think is pretty rad, and thank you everyone for watching. <laughs>